Hey everyone, this is Brad from DevOps Journey, and this is my course on Ansible. Quick reminder that all the code seen in these videos is available on GitHub. I've also put timestamps for the video in the description below, so if you want to skip to a certain configuration element, then just find and click the appropriate timestamp. So Ansible is a configuration management tool and we use it to help automate configuration of devices. Uh, I'm on the Ansible website and you can see here these are the different things that you can help automate and manage the configuration of. So you can do that for your infrastructure, applications, containers, your networks, security and cloud. Basically you can automate the configuration of just about anything now. And configuration management is becoming very popular in the IT and DevOps realm just because of the ability to rapidly deploy consistent configurations. Other configuration management tools that you might be familiar with are Chef, Puppet, and SaltStack. The reason that Ansible is becoming uh, a lot more popular than these other options is because it's completely agentless and you don't actually require any software on the agents. It connects up through SSH connections so you can have old legacy devices, old routers, old switches and Ansible is able to connect to them via SSH and configure them. So a quick look at a topology that we have here. So we have the Ansible control station and uh, the control station is what's going to be running our playbooks and have our inventory file and then we have about four servers here so we have a proxy uh, group with a single load balancer we have a web servers group with two web server nodes and a database group with a single database and the Ansible control station will configure all these devices and manage the configuration of all these devices by creating SSH connections and uh, just making sure their configuration state is valid. So there's two main files in any Ansible configuration and that is the inventory file and the playbook. So the inventory file has groups as well as hosts. So this is the inventory file for the lab that we are doing and you can see that it has the four different groups as well as the five different servers. Uh, so load balancer, the two web servers, the database and then I also have Ansible control there so I can control the configuration of the Ansible control station as well. And then in the playbook I have the configuration of all these devices. So you can see that it's configuring Apache on the web servers, Nginx on the proxy, and MySQL on the database. You, these playbooks can get pretty deep and go through a lot of configuration. This is just a quick look at what they sort of look like. Uh, in the labs, we'll be going in depth into creating these playbooks and making functional playbooks. All right, so the first thing you want to do when getting started with these labs is to download uh, the labs from GitHub. I have the link in the description below, but the command you'll run is git clone, and then here's the URL. So it's bradmorg slash ansible dash labs dot git, and hit enter and it's going to clone the repository and if we go into Ansible Labs we can see the structure of the folders here so we got about nine separate labs here and a working directory folder named lab so I'll be going you can go into the lab folder to do the labs and the answer key for the actual lab will be in the folders themselves. So by the end of video one, we will be, the answer key will be in this folder. And by the end of lab two, the answers will be in there. So if you ever need to get caught up, just pull the configuration from any of these labs uh, to get started. Feel free to go through this folder structure just to look at how the code sort of progresses and how we sort of get more into Ansible. 
So we're going to be using uh, Vagrant to create the virtual machines for our environment and the entire Vagrant configuration is within this Vagrant file. I'll pull it open in Visual Studio Code and go over the configuration, but if you're not sure how to get Vagrant installed or set up, please watch uh, my Vagrant tutorial and that'll help you out. So we have the Vagrant file loaded here and this is going to be building our pre-staging environment where we have our five different servers. So we have the control workstation and then we have the database, the web servers, and the load balancer. And you can see they all have a unique IP address and we're using the same Ubuntu image for all of them. And we can see that it's just looping through setting all this setting up all the settings, setting the the RAM and uh, the host names. So if you want to change any of these parameters, go ahead. But I'm going to go ahead and bring up our environment with the vagrant up command next. So I'm back in the command line here and uh, you can see VirtualBox on the right hand side and on the left hand side is my terminal. So I'll just do vagrant up and this will read that vagrant file we were just looking up and this will uh, bring up the, all those virtual machines from that vagrant file that we just configured and uh, the virtual machines should start populating on the right hand side I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video dramatically because this will take about 10 to 15 minutes so as you can see, each of the hosts are being configured and set up in VirtualBox. And uh, once everything is set up, we are going to SSH into the Ansible control station. So I'll SSH in with Vagrant SSH Ansible control. And I'll make sure to do that in the working directory where my Vagrant file is and this should connect up pretty shortly here and it looks like I'm in so the next thing I want to do is copy over the host file which is in the vagrant slash host file and just move it here and I'll I want to make sure that I do that as root so I do sudo copy and that's copied over and now if I cat this out I can see all my hosts and I should have name resolution on them now. So I can ping my DB, I can ping my web server and the load balancer. So that looks good. The next thing I want to do is I want to install Ansible. So I will do that I'm doing sudo apt install Ansible. And go yes. And this will just take a minute to install. I'll speed up the video. Alright, so that looks like it installed. I'm going to clear the screen. So we'll run our first Ansible command just to make sure that it's working successfully. So we'll run a ad hoc command here and we'll do that by calling Ansible. And then we want to do the host name. So we'll just say localhost and the module we want to run is commands with the parameter of host name. So Ansible will talk to localhost and ask for the host name. So it should return Ansible control and it looks like it did and we can run basically any command we want so if we do date it should return today's date and that looks good to me so now that we know that this is running successfully on our local host let's go ahead and see if we can communicate with our other uh, servers So to start communicating with other servers, we're going to need an inventory file. So I'm going to go into the lab directory here and I'm going to go new file and I'm going to call my inventory file hosts. 
And in that host folder, or sorry, that host file, I'm going to define all my groups and my hosts. So I have one for control. I have one for web servers. And then database. And then let's put proxy up here. So under control, I just have my one control workstation. Under proxy, my one load balancer. So I put the host name there. Web servers, there's two web servers, Web01 and Web02. And for the database, we'll put DB01. The next thing I want to add is I want to do a group of groups. So I'm going to call uh, this group WebStack. And I'm going to use the special term children. And under this group is going to be the three groups in regards to my web stack. So proxy, web servers, and database. So how this one works is if you reference the web stack, it's going to look at the children of these groups which is proxy, web servers, database, so it'll grab these four servers. So that's all we need for our inventory file and for most of the labs our inventory file is gonna remain this simple. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop back into the command line and see if we can run some commands to the servers. So I'm back in the command line here now the next thing we want to do is we want to get into our working directory where that inventory file is so that's under the root uh, vagrant and if we look here uh, we have all our folders so we want to go into the lab folder and we can see that host file that or sorry that inventory file that we just created and now we're ready to run our command so let's do ansible and instead of doing localhost, let's reference WebStack, which has all our WebStack servers. And now we need to include an inventory file. So dash i for inventory. And then uh, the module is going to be the command module. And the command will be hostname. And if we run this, we'll see that we're getting a lot of SSH activity. Let's go ahead and hit yes and you can see that all the connections fail. This is because we haven't set up SSH yet. So this is going to be a common thing that you see if SSH isn't properly set up. So let's go ahead and set up SSH so that this command will run successfully. So to set up SSH we'll clear the screen and uh, we'll run the ssh keygen command and this is going to generate an ssh key pair and we're just going to leave the default blank and now that we have that uh, let's copy this over to localhost hit enter enter oops it wants the password, which is vagrant, so we'll put in uh, vagrant for the password. So we copy that locally. Now let's run the command to copy that key everywhere. We're going to hit yes, and we'll type vagrant. And we'll just do this for all our hosts. This command is available in the GitHub so you don't need to type it out and it's under lab one uh, for creating the SSH keys so I'll just continue to accept and then put the password vagrant and this SSH key should be copied to everywhere and it looks like that's done so let's go ahead and go back in our command history and run this Ansible web stack command again with the hostname parameter and it should run successfully and as you can see 
It ran the commands successfully to Web01, Web02, the database, and Load Balancer, and it returned the host name for each of them. And we can run the same thing with a different command like date. And you can see that it returned the date for all of them. So you can see how powerful it can be to manage multiple uh, servers with just a small inventory file and just setting up SSH. All right, so the last thing we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to set up the Python simple JSON module on all our hosts. And basically, this is just a module that we want installed, and it will give the full functionality of Ansible. So it's very simple to do. All we need to do is to call Ansible again. And we're instead of going web stack or, or localhost, we're going to use the special term all. So it's going to connect to all the hosts in our inventory. And we'll specify our inventory file of hosts. And we'll do the command module again. And the command we're going to run is sudo apt-get install python dash simple json now since uh, we're running this remotely we won't be there to accept uh, the apt prompt we need to add this flag right here so we'll add dash y so sudo apt get dash y install python simple json hit enter and let's go yes so this is going to take a few minutes to install so I'll, I'll just cut to the end. All right, so it looks like everything's installed successfully. So that's all we're going to do for this video. In my next tutorial, we will go over running more ad hoc commands and how to install packages and make sure the state of a system is correct and how to restart services. Basic administration using Ansible. So please check out that video. Uh, if you found this helpful, please uh, smash that like button, and if you want to see future videos, go ahead and hit subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.